Thanks so much for being here guys. Today I wanted to share with you a piece which I consider to be a kind of a breakthrough piece. That's one of those pieces that you just play and play and play and learn from memory and it's got so much technique in it that playing it again and again and again your whole playing kind of jumps up a level. I've seen with myself and with students over the years these big jumps of progress like breakthroughs in progress they very often come about as, as a result of practicing one piece obsessively. You know, so often to improve, we want to find things which are just so hard and we struggle with them and struggle with them. And actually, I don't think that's the secret to improving. I think the secret is finding something that you can do and then making it easy and then from easy, making it effortless. Because then once something's effortless, that technique is just solid in you. So this is a great piece for doing this. You know, it's it's pretty simple. It's about it's five lines long. You're going to be able to memorize it. And if you like it, I'd really recommend yeah, just playing it over and over again, committing it to memory and just doing it again and again. So this piece was written in 1815 by Mario Giuliani, who was like the Jimi Hendrix of the 19th century, friend of Beethoven's. Believe it or not, he actually played cello in uh, in the in the orchestra in Beethoven's orchestra. And this piece he wrote is a study. It's an allegro, which means it's fairly fast, and it's from a set called Papillon, Butterfly. So it's got this light feel, you know, and we have to remember that he was playing on a gut string guitar. It was a classical guitar in the literal sense, so this is a classical guitar, but this is, he was playing on a real classical guitar, as in from the classical period, from the 18th century, with the gut strings. And it would have been quite a light sound and a light not a very serious piece and it's there's always a danger with playing classical music that we become a little bit serious so we're going to try not to do that today so we're going to start by learning the three right hand patterns used in the song we're going to talk about the thumb index middle and ring finger we always talk about thumb index middle and ring on the right hand so that we we don't get confused with the left hand which is finger one finger two finger three and finger four the thumb is always going to play on the bass strings that is the d the a and the e strings the metal wound strings if we're if we're on a classical guitar nylon string guitar and the index finger is always going to play on the third string that's the g string third up from the floor the middle finger is always going to play on the second string that's the b string second up from the floor and the ring finger is always going to play on the high e string first string up from the floor. So that's going to be their, their home strings, their home position. And whenever we're playing with a thumb, just with a thumb, it's a great idea to keep those fingers there, keep them planted. Um, so let's have a look at the patterns. There's three, there's three main patterns. The first one, thumb, index, middle, index, ring, index, middle, index. So you'll notice every other finger is an index finger the G string. So I'll well, just run, run through that again. It's the fifth string, third, second, third, first, third, second, third. That's pattern one. Pattern number two is just between the thumb and the index finger. And what is a great idea is to put these two fingers down on the top two strings as a kind of an anchor. And we just go between the thumb and the index finger. So that's thumb, index, thumb, index, thumb, index, thumb, index. Four times it goes between. We're going to count the piece in quavers. If you look at the original score, it's written in semi-quavers or 16th notes, but that just looks a little bit scary and confusing and there's absolutely no, no disadvantage to counting it in quavers. So the way we're going to count this pattern is we're going to have thumb, index, thumb, index, one and two and three and four and. So that's pattern number two. Sometimes the thumb is on the fourth string. One and two and three and four and. So pattern number one across all the strings. And pattern number two just between two strings. Thumb, index, thumb, index. And then there's also pattern number three, which comes at the very end, which is just rolling from the lowest note to the highest note. So it's thumb, index, middle, ring, and then thumb, index, middle, ring, thumb, index, middle, ring, thumb. And all these patterns can be practiced in isolation. It's a great thing to do. If you don't like the sound of the open strings, you can hold down any chord or you can just mute the strings out. That's a great way actually to hear your sound and to hear the rhythm. So now let's put both hands together and play the piece. It's got five lines, 
with four bars in each line. And the first line starts with these two note chords. They look like two note chords as in we're just holding two notes with the left hand. Now this is an A minor chord, and you might be thinking, but I thought that was A minor, and this is A minor if we're strumming. But as we're only plucking four of the strings, we don't need to hold down the second finger on the fourth string. So we're just gonna play our A minor like this. You'll notice that when you're finger picking, the, the left hand chord shapes might look quite different to how they look when you're strumming. So we start with this little A minor chord, and pattern number one. So that's one, one repeat of pattern number one equals one bar, because we're counting in eight, eighth notes and we've got eight of them. One and two and three and four and. The next bar is pattern number two. Finger one comes up and we have this little walking bass on the fifth string. Actually finger one goes around the back and finger three is going to go around the front of the second finger. We keep playing this note as a kind of a pedal note, so it's one and two and three and four. The next two bars are a sequence of the first two bars. In other words, the notes are kind of moved up. Some of them stay the same, but generally it's the same pattern yanked up, a, yanked up a few notes. And we have a D minor chord, and this is the full D minor chord that we're used to strumming. I like to use finger four for fret three, just because my fingers don't stretch out so properly. But if, you, if you're one of those finger three D minor players, that's totally cool too. I'll use the pinky. So pattern number one, and then pattern number two with this little walking bass. Now we're going to move to line three. In line three we have an E major chord. Again, it's a minimalist version, two fingers only. Kind of like the A minor that we started with, but up a string, string towards the sky. So finger one on string three, finger two on string four. Pattern one. Then we have pattern two, but we have a slightly different sequence because we are starting on fret two and it goes fret two, fret three, fret two, and the open string. The second half of the second line of the song uses pattern one twice. So here, instead of going pattern one, pattern two, we stick with pattern one, and we have two different chords. We have an A minor chord over C. That's A minor with a C in the bass. And then we have an E7 chord over B. That's the E7 notes with the E in the bass. And it sounds like this. Notice that I'm putting a little bit of F emphasis on the bass. The bass is really where the melody of the piece is. focusing on that, that melody and I'm playing the finger notes quite gently as, a, as an accompaniment really. Once you've got the first two lines, you've really got the whole piece, because everything that comes after that is really taken from those patterns. So line three is a verbatim repeat of line one. Line four has the full A minor chord, the A minor chord that we know and love for strumming, and it uses only pattern one with the right hand. So it uses only pattern one for the whole line. The first bar is the A minor chord with the thumb on string four. Then the thumb plays on string six, same pattern. We don't, we don't move the chord. Even though we cannot see this note written in the tabs of the second bar, we still keep it, it makes things easier. Then we lift off finger one, we've got an E sus four chord. And then we swap finger three and finger one on the same string, so we have finger one on the third string. Again, you'll notice I don't lift this finger off. There's no need to lift it off. So if I just run through that line, A minor over E to be precise, because I'm playing the E. And then again, A minor over E. E sus four. And E. So this brings us to the last line of the piece, which uses a new right hand pattern, which is just thumb, index, middle ring. Just cascading up the arpeggios and down the strings. So we've got 
index, middle, ring, and the thumb is going to start on the A string. And we start with this A minor chord. And then we have an E7 chord, finger one and finger four. And then the A minor chord again, and then a regular E chord. And then those two bars repeat. Thumb, index, middle, ring, E7, and then the regular E. And there's a hidden tune in there, I don't know if you noticed. But if I just bring out the notes on the second string, we hear this really cool. Which is kind of fun. Then the piece just ends with a thumb note. So there are loads of cool ways of practicing this piece. I know at the beginning I said you want to, you know, you want to get a piece that you practice over and over again, but it doesn't mean you're practicing it the same way over and over again. One piece, lots of approaches is a great, it's a great formula. Rather than hundreds of pieces, one approach, which is just to play them all through a million times, that really doesn't work as well. But if you take one piece and play it in as many different ways as you can, and you'll be amazed at the results you get. So number one thing is just to play the melody, which is the thumb notes, of course. So I'm holding down, I'm still preparing this. I'm hold, keeping these notes here. I'm keeping my fingers on their strings, and I'm just playing the thumb of the piece. I'm kind of hearing the other notes in my head, but I'm not playing them. A really legato line with a thumb. You know, like a cello. He was a cellist actually, Giuliani, so maybe. He was also known for making a really incredible melody when he played. So that would be the piece thumb only. Another great way to do it is just to play the chords. great practice for the left hand and it's actually great for memorizing it because you get to you, you know whenever you want to memorize something it's great to memorize it from scales or anything like that to memorize the shapes because that's it's very easy for the visual memory to actually remember what the shapes look like so that's a great way to to work through this piece as well so you know one piece i would stick to it and like go deep into it but look at it in a, in, a lot of, in a lot of different ways. Also a great study for acoustic guitar, any, any style of, any kind of finger style really. Um, so you could play it like a classical guitarist, you know, with this classical technique on, on, the, on the acoustic guitar. That sounds, sounds great. Great, great for the melody in the bass because you have this really nice sustain on, an, on a steel string acoustic guitar. You could also practice it a little bit more acoustic style, you know, with the palm anchored in or with a, with a pinky anchored over there. And maybe if you're anchoring with your pinky, you, you wouldn't use the ring finger as much. You'd kind of avoid that. You'd go thumb, index, middle, index, and you'd use the middle, the, the middle finger on, on the top two strings. Um, you could even practice with a, with a thumb pick. You know, it's, a, it's a great study for any style. You could even practice muting out the bass. Loads of different ways you can play it and you know if it's if it's a piece that appeals to you if you like the sound of it and, you, and you're a fingerstyle player I cannot recommend it highly enough for for both hands really because you got that you got that independent motion of the, of the left hand and some really quick shifts and you got this great this great pattern in the right hand three patterns thanks so much for watching guys I hope you got something useful out of that I hope this piece gives you what it gave me which is it really helped me to take my playing to the next level and as I said probably about 300 times, it's helped. I've seen it help lots of players do that. And it's also a great performance piece. Uh, if you've enjoyed, please hit the like button. Please subscribe to the channel. That helps us a lot. And tabs and extra lesson notes and everything are all on our Patreon page. So thanks so much for being on this journey with us, guys. And we'll, we'll see you soon. Ciao. Mm -hmm.